Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. I'm your host as always, Captain Ron. Today, we are gonna handle one of the most asked questions and requests that we ever got. How to smoke a brisket on the big green egg. In today's video, we're gonna start by trimming the brisket. We're gonna remove any excess fat from the brisket, trimming down to about a quarter inch fat cap. We'll apply the binder to help the rub stick. Season the brisket liberally. Preheat the big green egg to 250 degrees and smoke that brisket. Once it hit 165, wrap the brisket in butcher paper to retain moisture, and then we'll finish it. Return the wrapped brisket to the egg until it reaches 203 degrees or the probe slides in like a hot knife through soft butter. Once it's done, let it rest in a cooler before slicing into these heavenly delicious slices of beefy goodness. Easy enough, right? Let's say we go ahead and get started. Yep, smoking a brisket on a big green egg is very daunting if you don't know about it, but let me tell you, it's easy. I promise you, you've heard it so hard to do. It's really easy. There's a few simple steps. Before we start trimming, let's go over the brisket. There are two main parts to the brisket. This top section here, which is called the flat or the first cut, and this part here is called the point or the second cut. The point is gonna be your much fattier ends. First thing I like to do is kind of stick my finger in here and get it in between this big wedge of fat that's on this top end and just cut it right off of here, okay? Remember when you're doing this, you wanna start with a really sharp knife. There's more accidents that happen from a dull knife than it is with a sharp knife. Okay, that's just one solid piece of fat right there. We're gonna save this stuff, we can do lots of things with it. Okay, but on the flat, we wanna get all of this off the top. All right, now this brisket is a little bit odd shaped. Normally I like to try and keep it really aerodynamic so that the smoke can roll over it, but this one's a little bit odd shaped and that's gonna happen every once in a while, so that's okay. But we wanna to continue to take this off right down to the meat, all right? So when you're doing the top side like this, it's a good time to try and get some of this extra stuff that you won't be able to see from the other side. Okay, and if you do happen to get a little bit of meat in there, that's okay, don't worry about it. Okay, and the only other thing we have to do is, sometimes on a brisket, you're gonna get some of this browning here. It's just where air has touched it. You could really leave it, but it's a little bit hard, it's a little bit gross, so I like to just trim that off. If I'm making a brisket, I want it to be the best possible brisket that I can make, so we're gonna take all the stuff off that does not belong. Folks, through this video, any of the products that you see me using, there's probably a link down below in the description. All right, and that looks pretty good for the top side. What we can do is you see this fat along this whole side here? We can cut that right off. Again, work in small increments, so you don't wanna to go too deep into the meat. Okay, so you can see what I did here. Just got a little tiny bit of that meat on there, that's okay. And as you can see, we've gone through pretty good. That's pretty much just gonna be solid fat on the other side. So we're gonna trim that more when we flip it over, which I do believe we are about ready to do. Yeah, the one thing about buying a whole pack of brisket, you get a lot of waste, but you can take all this stuff and do a lot of things with it. There's a video that we did before, and it's how to make beef tallow out of it, and it's like liquid gold. And you can see we got a beautiful edge here now. So, let's flip it over and get to work on the bottom side. And this, this side is the bottom, it has the fat cap. We wanna trim this down to about a quarter of an inch. We only want about a thin layer of fat still on here. That's gonna protect the brisket as we cook, because on a big green egg, it's gonna put it fat cap down. You know, and the more you do this, the more you'll get used to it, the easier it gets. It's kind of daunting at first, but you can do it. Now, one thing I want to talk about is how to pick out a brisket when you're shopping for it. All right, I waited until after I trimmed it because I wanted you to see something here. On the flat end, look for one that has the thickest possible flat. See how this has nice width all the way across? Reason being is once it cooks down, it's going to thin down a little bit but otherwise you get too much of it that you have to cut off and it gets too dried out and you can't even eat it anyway. So look for one with as thick as possible. Some people like to round the edge here. So if you want to, you can cut a little piece off here, round the edge off. Again, the more aerodynamic, the better it's gonna cook because the smoke will roll over the leaves. This one's pretty well rounded already. So there we have it, folks. There's a pretty nicely trimmed brisket. I like, I would rather if this was just kind of the same height and same thickness all around, but it's not. So it is what we deal with, but this was a beauty. This was about 13 and a half pounds when we started. And now we're all done trimming. So we're gonna move on to our next step. We're gonna apply a binder to help the rub stick better. I like to use W sauce. Some people call it Worcestershire. I just call it my little barbecue sidekick. Okay, and then we just rub it around. Now remember, a little splash goes a long way. You know, kind of like my dad jokes. <laughs> a lot of people use 50-50 salt and pepper. We sell actually, this is from Lane's Barbecue, Killer Rubs. Uh, this is their brisket rub. And when you're seasoning it, you wanna cover it pretty liberally. Okay, so we're gonna give it a good shake. Hold your shaker up high so that it disperses as it's coming out. If you do it like this, you're just gonna get big clumps. So you hold it up higher and it kind of spreads itself out quite nicely. And this stuff tastes great. So we covered a whole entire thing. Front, top, sides, everything. Nice, solid coating. And we flip it over and do the same thing. Okay. 
Okay. Another splash of W sauce, America's Worcestershire. Now the seasoning's not quite as important on this side because what's gonna happen here is this is gonna be, you know, the side down. And plus the seasoning is not gonna get through to the meat. It's just gonna get sitting on top of this fat, but that's okay. It's all flavor. Brisket's trimmed and seasoned. Only one thing left to do, let's get the egg going. We're gonna use a blazer ball with two of our all natural Fogo fire starters. Now what the blazer ball is, it's this small little cage that you put the fire starters in, okay? And just like that, you could drop it into the bottom of the egg. So I'm gonna put it in the bottom so that the fire, the air is getting right to the fire as soon as it gets in there. Nice, efficient burning. This blazer ball is awesome. Now I happen to have a bag of Super Premium open. It's called Super Premium because look at the size of these chunks. Now this is already halfway through the bag, so some of the really big stuff is gone, but we're gonna load this egg up and we're gonna cook with Super Premium today, our low and slow charcoal. And what's happening here, even though you're seeing smoke, there's still fire under there because the air is allowed to get to that because of the blazer ball. It allows it to stay in that cage and not get snuffed out by the charcoal. Now for our smoke, we're gonna use a brand new product by Fogo here, that's right. So we've got all new wood chunks. We come out with wood chunks and chips coming out. So these things are awesome and look at their beautiful size. They're all clean and we're using oak. I like oak with brisket. It's a great match. Mesquite could go well, cherry can go well. I personally prefer Fogo with oak. Now what we want is we want to get our smoke going over the next hour to two hours. So I'm going to put one right in the fire, okay, right in the middle of the fire. The others I'm going to put right around the outside, right around the perimeter, so that they catch as the fire spreads. Okay, does that make sense to y'all? So hopefully that should give us a nice job there. Wait, don't go anywhere because we are going to cook this indirect, which means that there's going to be no flames directly up under the brisket, okay? And the reason that we put the fat cap down on a big green egg is because that convector will get real hot and it's gonna put off a lot of heat. We don't want the bottom of the brisket to dry out. So we're gonna get this going at 250 degrees and put on our brisket. I'm getting so excited, baby. So the grill is at 250 degrees, so that is exactly where we want it. We're gonna track our monitor, our temperatures with our meter plus. So we stick it right into the middle of the meat, right at the thickest part of the flat and the point where they meet up. We're gonna ready to put this on the egg, okay? Got beautiful smoke going, nice blue smoke, okay? Now, we're gonna put it on here, right on the grates. Now what you wanna do, okay, is have it on there, put the fat cap down like we talked about. The reason being, you always want that fat cap, whatever kind of smoke you're smoking in, closest to the heat source. It's gonna protect the meat and prevent it from drying out. So, 250 degrees on the big green egg, fat cap down, Lane's brisket seasoning, Worcestershire sauce, we got the whole thing going on, baby. Now, we wait. All right, now this is what I'm always talking about. Normally we use 165 as a benchmark to wrap our brisket. We're at 172. The reason I let it go for so much longer is I wanted to build that bark. Look at that beautiful dark bark that we have on there now. I let this go a little bit extra. I didn't stop it at 165 because what I want to do is I want to get this bark nice and built up, nice and dark. Look at that, pull the meter out. Look at the, look at the juices leaking out of it. Can you see that? So to wrap it, first thing we do is we fold the end over. The top, just like this. And what I like to do is I like to fold it along here. So we fold it once like that, okay? Do the same thing again to the other side. The whole length of the paper, we fold it just like that, okay? And all we do then is take it, wrap it back over, underneath so it seals it, and that is a wrapped brisket. And now all we have to do is put it back on the grill. So we're gonna put it right back, right where it was. I'm gonna put the meter back in where it was, right in between the flat and the point. So that's about halfway through the meat. And let her go till about 203 degrees. Guys, it's only 12 and a half hours later and we have reached that magical time. The brisket is done. It is at 203 and not only that, when I take a probe and I go into it, I mean, it, there's no pressure. No pressure whatsoever, it just goes right into the meat, okay? Anywhere you go, it just goes right in. So that's how we know that it's done. But wait a second, rewind. We're not quite done yet. There's one more step to this process. We take our entire wrapped brisket, we're gonna set it down inside of a cooler or a cambro. This happens to be what's called a cambro warming box. Uh, it's used for catering, but if you don't have one of these, you can do it in a cooler. Get an appropriate size cooler, okay? You don't wanna put it in a 110 gallon cool size cooler for a brisket this big. Try and find something that's a little bit the same size. If you're using a cooler, I like to suggest put a towel over it or something like that. When you put it, when you put the brisket down in there, put your towel over that. This way it really insulates it well. The reason that what we're doing is here, as this thing is sitting in here, all those juices are redistributing. All those muscles, as it's cooking, they're doing this. 
okay? So what happens is now as we rest it, all of those muscles relax, all that juice redistributes. So when we cut into it, all that juice stays in the brisket. That's where we want it because we want nice and juicy meat. And the muscles are all relaxed, it becomes super tender and way more enjoyable to eat. So now we just wait again. Well, folks, one thing for sure, brisket can be a very long day when you're cooking. But the good news is we're finally at the end here. Oh, man, you see the steam coming out of this thing as I pull that lid off? Amazing, just amazing. Pull our meter out. Now, let's unwrap it and see what we, oh my God, this paper is just filled with juice. Oh yeah, look at this thing. Oh my goodness. Guys, we've got a brisket here. Woo, it's hot. It's crazy hot. And there we go, there it is. Now, look at that jiggle, folks. That is what you're looking for. When you got that jiggle, when it's wiggling like that, you know you're in good shape. Remember, this is how to cook brisket on a big green egg. Now, the brisket, the grain runs this way here and runs this way in the point. Remember we talked about the point and the flat? So what we wanna do is kinda of cut it right down the middle like this. Oh, see how tender that is? That went right through. Let's see what we've got. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. On both sides, no less. Look at that. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. So, I can see the grains are running this way. If you're comfortable, you can even mark your brisket before you even cook it like that. This bark is amazing. You always wanna cut it, just like anything else, against the grain. So let's see what we've got right through. Okay, you wanna cut it into about pencil thick slices. Perfect, the bend test passed perfectly. It pulls right apart, no problem. Here is where we have to do the ultimate test. I'm willing to take one for the team here and taste this just for you. That's right, you, I'm talking to you. Yes, you. <laughs> Woo! I love it when a plan comes together. Mm. Amazing, beautiful slices. Now you don't have to worry about, oh, I didn't get a smoke ring or anything like that. Don't worry about it. Smoke ring was something that was brought up from competition barbecue. It doesn't affect the flavor, it doesn't affect anything. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, but if you don't get one, it's okay. That is the flat. Now, let's get to the point, shall we? It just, it, it's so tender, it just wants to come apart. Yeah, I think that maybe we passed in the bend test okay. Now, let's taste the point, the fattier end, the flavorful end, fat equals flavor. Yes, you do have to do that every time that you cook a brisket and it turns out right. That is a brisket on the big green egg, okay? This is the most basic way. We have other videos that we've done. We've done the foil boat method. We've done fat cap up, fat cap down, you name it. But we've never done how to cook a brisket on the big green egg. Now we have, all right? I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you got some good, uh, some good information out of it. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out anytime. You could always hit me on my Instagram. It's CaptainRon302, CPTN. R-O-N-302. There's also a link below in the description. So come find me, ask me as many questions as you want. I'm happy to answer, all right? Anyway, that's Brisket 101 here for you folks. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on that I do want to add is that always start with the highest quality grade piece of meat you can. This is a prime brisket, okay? That's why it's just flooding with juices. It's super tender. You go to choice, it's gonna be a little tougher, a little drier. You go to select, don't even do it, okay? But if you can get a minimum of, of a choice, and Prime is even better. This came from Costco, it was like, I don't know, 49 a pound or something like that. Absolutely fantastic. So I'm just gonna keep slicing it. We're gonna keep eating. You go ahead and enjoy yourself and write down everything we did here, all right? And um, that's all I got for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you saw here. Don't forget to like the video and leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you think. What's your favorite thing to barbecue? That's all I've got for you folks. Remember to get out and grill. I'll see you the next time on the Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out.